I'm JC Vaughn for Scoop and the Fandom Advisory Network, live at Comic Con 2013 with Grant Geisman, the author of a new book on Al Feldstein, the famous Mad Magazine editor. Grant, you've done a lot of books about EC and about Mad, and you have a distinguished career as a collector. What keeps bringing you back to this subject? I mean, it's, this is basically the stuff I love. And it's, the weird thing is it's essentially all the material published by Bill Gaines. You know, Mad Magazine, and then going back into the 50s, the EC Comics with Weird Science, Tales from the Crypt, you know. And that's the stuff I fell in love with, you know, in 1965 with these little Ballantine paperback reprints of EC. And even before that when I picked up Mad Magazine. And that's the stuff I still love. What can you tell us about the new book? I'm so excited to get this out. It's essentially a full uh, coffee table biography and art book on Al Feldstein, as you mentioned, who was the legendary editor for Mad, of MAD for nearly 30 years. And he wrote and drew for the comics I mentioned, Tales from the Crypt, Weird Science, you know, all the stuff uh, published by Bill Gaines. So. And so did you work with him on the project? I did. I mean, I've known Al for, you know, more than 20 years, and I've actually interviewed him extensively. So, uh, you know, pulling this project together was amazing because I took a couple trips up to visit him. He lives way up in the middle of nowhere in Livingston, Montana, on a, like a 270-acre ranch. And we opened up boxes that he hadn't even looked at in probably 50 years, stuff that his mother had. And so we found all these pictures of him as a kid and, you know, early cards, you know, I love you, Mom, from when he was eight years old. And... You know, it was really amazing to kind of go through this stuff and pull it. That sort of just started right where I wanted to ask you about, which was this book covers not just his mad career, but it actually is his formative years as an artist. What was it like revisiting that stuff with him? Well, he has a pretty amazing memory for detail, you know. And um, so actually the first time I went and interviewed him for this other book I did called Tales of Terror, I think it was in 90, 1996, which is going back a ways. And I would show him these old comics that he worked on. And he would look at the address and he'd go, oh, 1770 or whatever, Broadway, that's so-and-so. And I used to go up to the fifth floor and they had this little publishing outfit and I did a few jobs for them. And it was like these, you know, you give them an address and it would click these memories. It was unbelievable. So we've got a copy here if you want to want to show the book here. I'd love to. This is actually, tonight's the first time I've seen an actual printed copy. I, you know, I designed it and I knew what it was supposed to look like, but here it is for real, you know. And it's very heavy, 416 pages. And heavy means authoritative, right? Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but like you said, it's it literally, you know, Feldstein's career spans the sort of mid 1940s in comics, you know, to actually recently, because now he does fine art paintings and also recreations of his old EC comic covers in oil, in uh, not oils, but acrylics. What does he think of the continued interest in the EC comics, uh, where many of the comics from that same period have had revivals? It's sort of with the ECs, it's not like they ever really went away. Because, you know, fans kind of kept them in print, you know. Russ Cochran kept the whole EC library thing going and for, for years. So in a way, the EC comics have never disappeared. But to answer your original question, Feldstein is both sort of uh, bemused by the whole thing and, of course, flattered. But he keeps reiterating over and over that they never thought this stuff would last. It was comic books. It was ephemeral entertainment. It was made to be read once or twice and then thrown away or passed on to your brother or your neighbor or other kids at school. And then, you, you know, until the next issue came out. And then, you know, so he is as surprised as anyone that the EC comics are still around. All right, going to switch gears here for a minute. You have one of the most varied careers of anybody we talk to on a regular basis in terms of you are the uh, composer of the, the music for Two and a Half Men. Co You're, the music, you yep. are uh, an accomplished jazz musician and have done many other things. What's, what do you got coming up now and next? Well, I have a couple other projects I want to do with Al. One of them is the complete um, Junior and Sonny reprinting all those comics from the late 40s, which is kind of like his first foray into writing and uh, illustrating comics. And they were sort of a knockoff of Archie, but much more titillating because they were for Fox Publications, and they they 
for their philosophy was, you know, show a little extra skin on the cover, you know, provocative poses, and uh, it's pretty interesting stuff, and they're very rare, so they've really never been reprinted. That's great. So that'll and, be fun. And what, anything on the music front? On the music front, well, my most recent CD came out last summer called Bop Bang Boom. And, uh, and you had a lot of, you had a lot of uh, co-conspirators on that one. Oh. I did. Um, Tom Scott on sax is some of the guests. Let's see. There's one track uh, for guitar fans with uh, me, Larry Carlton, and Albert Lee all trading solos on this kind of blues shuffle tune, Texas shuffle. So, uh, you know, people ask me how I do it, and the answer is I really don't know how I do it. I just kind of like decide I'm going to do something and then all of a sudden this is sitting here so I don't know <laughs> what anything else anything else coming up well we're starting um, season 11 if you can imagine that of two and a half men right uh, with Ashton Kutcher in the lead role now and John Cryer uh, the two, those two guys work amazing together and then we're starting I think it's season four of the other sitcom I co-write the music for Mike and Molly with Melissa McCarthy. I didn't, I didn't know you do that one too. Yeah, great. yeah, Melissa McCarthy and Billy Gardell, so that's a lot of fun. And then we'll see what happens after that. You never know. This is JC Vaughn, live at Comic-Con for Scoop and the Phantom Advisory Network.